What's up, guys? Pittsburgh Weiss Schwartz back again with another deck tech for you. I am joined today by Zach. Hello. The only other player in our Pittsburgh area that has uh, Love Live Nijigasaki set too and has been testing it alongside me. Uh, today we're going to talk about the deck that everyone's been talking about, uh, the Kanata Finisher uh, 8 Pants list. Uh, as usual, we have the entire deck list here at the start of the video. If that is all you're here for, be sure to drop us a like. Uh, we'll have the link to the Encore deck in the description of the video. But without further ado, we can jump into the cards themselves. Uh, we are playing four copies of the Shizuku Chiri. Uh, on play, you reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a music trait character, it gains 2,000 power until the end of the turn. And on death, you can discard a card, look it up to four cards from the top of your deck, and add a level one or higher card from among them to your hand. Uh, in, in this deck, uh, as in most other decks, you are uh, fishing aggressively for your level one combo at level zero. So you're trying to grab the Emma combo uh, or the cigarettes event uh, off this. Are there any other targets for this that I am, that are slipping my mind, Zach? No, it's really basically just those. You can grab your finisher or other level threes already, or mm -hmm. or the Drago Buster. But primarily, this is just for your level one combo. I was, I've I've also been considering replacing this completely with uh the with the Neon Cat uh, Shizuku that Setsu all introduced, since that's also as Ruby has demonstrated a, a good effect in and of itself, and it's also a a uh, a yellow card, so it slots slots in pretty nicely into this. Mm -hmm. uh, however, since this since none of the other level zero options in this list really get much power, this is your main power option if you need to kill something. Kill stuff, yeah. And also, it's pr the Emma uh, level one is really good, and being able to get into it fast is really nice. So I I say run this instead, but the I, I think the Neon Cat is also a respectable option if, yeah, you wanna, if we were willing to sacrifice the consistency. Yeah, as, as Ruby has shown us, Neon Cat is, uh, is defi should definitely be a consideration for deck building. The card is insane going second. Uh, and to an extent, uh, Mushoku has shown us the same thing. So those, uh, those kill a single thing your opponent has on the board effects are, uh, are definitely not to be overlooked. Uh, second card we've got here, the Kasumi Ricky. Uh, on play, pay one, put a music character from your waiting room to the bottom of your clock. Uh, lets you set color, which isn't as relevant in this deck. I'm pretty sure the deck is almost entirely blue. Yep, it's all it's all blue with a little bit of yellow. Mm -hmm. And it lets you uh, search your deck for a level one or lower character again, just looking for your level one combo, making sure you can get those Emma combos off every single game, because that card is pretty good. Yep, it's pretty much just an Emma Finder. It can't, there are a few other uh, level one cards that are run as tech options, so it can grab this as well. But this is primarily just to get you your Emma or your Brain Summer or your Pan Support or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, three copies of a Brainstorm, uh, self tap Salvage Brainstorm. Uh, as well as uh, the additional effect, when you play a Climax, you can look at the top two cards of your deck and put them back in any order. Uh, not as relevant in this deck as it is in some other decks, uh, but nope. having having the, having the knowledge of your trigger order can be relevant. Uh, but unfortunately, with your level one combo, the, uh, the Emma is on attack, look it up to four, add one, uh, just kind of runs over... Runs over your top two and completely invalidates this effect, at least at level one. Yeah, it does work pretty nice with the Kanata finisher, just because that one doesn't attack at all. So instead of instead of doing the usual thing where you would uh, look at your top first two attacks, with this 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 lets you uh, look at the top two. If there's a climax on top, you can put it on as your second card, so that when you Kanata twice and attack once. You have a, a cancel on top of your deck, which yeah. is a nice benefit to have. You know, you know, you trigger in your one lane, and you get a guaranteed cancel, and that's yeah. that, that's about all this effect is good for in this deck. Yeah, just level three, really. Mm. 
I half the time I forget to even do it at level one, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I, I I forget this effect half the time, yeah. yeah. I'm sure I'm sure you uh you have a little bit more experience with it after playing a ton of eight standby though. Yeah, I still forget though. <laughs> All right, at level zero, two copies of this Kanata card has uh, pay two, ditch two music characters, and spend a uh, cigarettes marker from underneath this. At the beginning of your attack step, you can pay that cost, and if you do choose one of your other music characters and stand them, that is flavor text. Yeah, it's a, we it is, don't it's care a, about that. It's a, it's a semi-relevant effect that lets you stand a Kana to finisher and attack with it after you combo off at the end of the game, but yeah. I, I have never seen anyone use this in my life. <laughs> yeah, the where the real magic is is the second effect here. It has Act Rest itself. If this card does not have a marker underneath it, uh, choose a music character or a cigarettes event in your waiting room and put it underneath this card as a marker. Then the turn after, or on a future turn, you can pay one rest this and add the marker from underneath this to your hand. Yes, it's a little bit of extra consistency. Mm -hmm. Just lets um, you uh, delayed grab a, a finisher or... Mm -hmm. I, I will say in recent testing with this deck, I used to be super hype about it because when I first uh, paid this card, I didn't read the... Choose either music character part of that text and I just did, I didn't either. Mark it, <laughs> yeah, and just marked the uh, cigarettes effect. Uh, but and that is nice that you can just mark your music and and delay salvage it. However, uh, in my experience, this deck has plenty of uh, sculpting ability already, even without this. Like in, like between the two cigarettes event itself, the Pants support the let you vote from clock, your uh, brainstormer. Um, the fact that the clown top, top end cantrips, you you have a you're probably gonna get uh, two contas in your hand pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And then if you market a contact for this, it's basically just gonna be a market card for us the game because you don't have much recent plus unless you need a discard a, a ditch a card. But but hey, one no. one, one cardboard compression and the potential for uh, for grabbing a card later in the yeah. game should you yeah. should you need it. Yeah, this is definitely a good card. Uh, I have considered. I haven't tested this yet, but I have considered just maybe possibly cutting it and running a couple of neon cats. See how that does. Mm -hmm. So this card, I would say, is is more expendable, even though it's really good, just because just because uh, your paint filter. Are, already and you already have a really busy back row as we'll get to later with the brainstorm this the uh you usually want to keep the pants support in the back row yeah. so mm -hmm. that it doesn't die so you can keep it around yeah that's that's uh, that's been the biggest issue with this card is there there are only so many slots in the back row and usually uh usually those are dedicated in my, in my case at least to the brainstorm and the pants support yeah th same here so you maybe want to consider swapping this out for something else. I would probably recommend the, recommend the Neon Cat since mm -hmm. that's a pretty proven effect that's pretty good. All right. Also at level zero, we have the Emma on play Rize. When this card is placed on the stage from your hand, look at up to three cards from the top of your deck. Choose an event and only an event from among them. Show it to your opponent, add it to your hand, and if you took a card, discard a card. So uh, a little bit of extra deck speed allows you to grab the cigarettes event or the Drago Buster event, uh, should you see one. Or uh, the Cosme event. Don't forget the Cosme or the, event. Or the Cosme event. I don't. I don't play. The, I don't play the Cosme event in my list. But yeah, yeah. we will. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yep. This, card, this card's also a level zero bottom deck bomb. So it's. Uh, it has a pretty useful second effect stapled onto it as well. Helps you. Uh, Especially in the current meta with like lots of hollow life flitting around, just lets you deal mm -hmm. with uh, with onion Ricky. Doesn't let them get that off. Uh, and cards like that that uh, like Cherry that go off when they go to waiting room just lets you completely mm -hmm. deny those. I will say I personally mostly just use this card for the deck speed. I mm -hmm. rarely go into playing this intending to hit an event off of it unless I'm trying to hit an event to put it in my waiting room yeah, already. I I, so. I, I agreed. If you happen to hit an event and it's an event you might be looking for, it's a it's a nice coincidence. But it does give you a little bit of an extra a, a little bit of extra deck speed on, uh, yeah. on your level zero bottom deck bomb. 
it, it's basically free deck speed as opposed to the cheeries you have to discard to do it. Mm -hmm. And it does it immediately. So this is a very nice card to have, but don't expect it to sculpt you for much. I believe this is our last level zero, two copies of the pants support. Uh, Continuous gives global 500 power to all of your other music characters uh, and has when you trigger a pants, uh, you can discard a card from your hand, which can be the uh, the climax you just took back off your pants trigger uh, to your waiting room. And if you do, choose a card in your clock, add it to your hand, and put the top card of your deck into your clock. So not not as good as like the uh, the pants support in Sao Tenth or in Mob, but a pants support nonetheless, which is uh, sometimes desperately needed when you're when mm -hmm. all you're doing is triggering pants. Yeah, sadly, you won't always have a clock to take advantage of this with, but uh, you'll, you usually will, and I and since you're running eight pants in this deck anyway, it's probably, it's, you're usually going to get some benefit off of it. At least make your hand a little bit better, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. S especially since you can take events or climaxes off of the, uh, off of the, uh, support effects since it doesn't affect you if it's a character or not. Yeah, like it it, fun it functions similarly to the uh, like the fate bar support where you are also sometimes fishing to grab events from your clock. All right, our first level one, the combo. When this card attacks, if there is an event in your waiting room, any event at all, uh, until the end of your opponent's next turn. So this card's at, this card sits at six k against three k power uh, through the end of your opponent's turn. Uh, 65 or more if you have like the pants support or some other power buff in the back row and it has a climax combo with the uh, with the emma pants uh, when this card attacks if the climax is in your climax zone and all of your characters are music trait which they always will be unless uh, your opponent steals a trait from you somehow uh, you mm. get to look oh, no, it up. They would do that. Yeah, <laughs> you, get, you get to look it up to four cards from the top of your deck. Choose up to one music character or event, so you can grab literally any card except for a climax from among them. Show it to your opponent, put it into your hand, and send the last to your waiting room. So it is a level one Magro style combo that sits at six K cross and can grab events. This card has felt very good to play in my. Uh, and my limited experience playing the stack with my couple games. The fact that it sits at 6k for free is insane. Mm hmm Because you're pretty much always going to hit that, just because between the cheery and the coming up play where and taking damage, you're probably going to get... You're pretty much, in my experience, I've never whiffed this. I have never. I, I don't think I've like ever whiffed this either, yeah, unless... Uh... The only time you're in danger of whiffing it is when you're almost out of your deck and you're about to refresh. Yes. Then, especially with the Malgar effect, you have to be super careful with what you do to make sure you don't accidentally make this a 3k or 4k if you're on climax play. Yeah. Because you can do that if you're not careful. Yeah, if you run your way through the rest of your deck before you attack with, uh, with your last Emma, sometimes you won't have that last event and it will have to swing small, but... You, it is up to four, so you have control over how many cards you mill. And mm -hmm. most of the time, if you're sculpting properly on first deck, uh, you'll have plenty of cards left to run through with uh, with two or three Emma's. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the fact that six K is just so nice, it lets you wall a little bit mm -hmm. if you're playing against a one K one. Yeah, sometimes is... some sometimes the Emma's just live for no reason, and it's great. Mm -hmm. It is fantastic. I loved I love to see that happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, also at level one, uh, four copies of the cigarettes event. Uh, it acts as a marker for the level zero Kanata that we looked at and is also uh, effective extra copies of most level zeros and level ones in your deck, which it's, I feel like it's almost guaranteed to grab uh, most of the time a level one, but definitely mm -hmm. a level zero. So functional extra copies of a lot of your cards uh, and also a card that your Emma level one combo can grab. So uh, it uh, turns your... Uh, your top four take one, uh, not super selective combo. If you grab this card into uh, into potentially something more selective from your waiting room, you can grab something you need. A little bit of deck speed as well, which mm -hmm. is nice, especially our, our main phase. It's kind of like the Reuse, just free deck speed if you need it. That also uh, can't trip yourself in your hand because as long as you, as long as you're not 
at zero cards in waiting room and your meal to climaxes, you can always take something yeah. off this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or two or two events, I guess. Yeah, so al- almost always, provided you aren't in a weird spot where you're only hitting climaxes with this, uh, it always turns itself into at least something playable for you. Uh, at level one, uh, one copy of this Emma. Uh, for each of your other music characters, gains 500 power. Uh, at full board, sits at 5,500 on your and your opponent's turn. When this card attacks, if the character across from it is level two, specifically level two, this card gains 6,000 power. Swings at 11,5. Yep, this is here to heat on standby. Yep, and if you're playing against standby, it's good. If you're not, it's a vanilla 55. And that's not bad. It's not horrible. Considered. Yeah. Especially considering when I was searching for level for uh, level one blues to play in this deck, I found it was actually kind of scuffed, actually, for in terms of characters. It was like the, at least in my opinion, the, the Emma, this Emma, and the Kanta, and the 2K backup we, we, we're going to look at soon, and not too much else. Yeah, the the one so, card the one card that I like that I am not sure I remember you playing in this deck when I put this uh, this video together mm-hmm. is the uh, the level one Kanata from the new set that is both on play and on death drop salvage. Uh yes, I have considered that that card is nice. Uh, I didn't want to build put in this particular build, but that's also I would say very worth considering mm-hmm. playing in this. I think that's really good, especially if you choose not to run the uh, the uh, back row Kanata at level zero. That that can give you a little bit of extra uh, sculpting ability extra if you don't want to play that. Room, yeah. yeah. All right. Up next, we have this level one Kanata. Uh, when this card is placed on the stage from your hand, you reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a music character or an event for the turn, your opponent's entire front row gets minus fifteen hundred power. Uh, card also has on play. Uh, you can discard an event if you do salvage a music character. Yes, you're primarily playing this for the second effect, obviously, because this mm-hmm. is a very event-heavy deck. However, that first effect is nice, especially if you just hit level one and opponent still at zero. Uh, that you can basically that basically turns this into a uh, a, a field nuke almost, especially if they have less powerful zeros. Mm-hmm. So. You can suddenly open up a lane, a little bit of extra damage in. I mean, if your opponent's on, like, say, Mushoku, and they're popping off, they have three Aerises on board with a Ghislaine in the back. Their board is 8,500. Mm-hmm. Uh, this yeah. uh, this card takes their Aerises down to 7k, which uh, which your Emma combo with Climax uh, either matches or beats, depending on whether you have the uh, the Pants Filter on board. So that is mm-hmm. not not an irre- sure, yeah. not an irrelevant effect, yeah. Yeah, it serves that benefit as well, obviously. Do keep in mind this card is only 500 power though, which is uh, very babyish. So this won't be killing anything itself. Yeah, not literally nothing. No. <laughs> it, it, if, if you're killing something with this, you killed it from the inner effect. That's the only way you kill yeah, something with this. Right. <laughs> it it is nice though, just for the ability to turn an event that you're not doing anything with them to you a character mm-hmm. or if just if for some reason you don't have an event in waiting room but you do have one in hand obviously that helps you can fix that with this as well yeah i mean unless it's like the cost of the event and you have don't have color for it you know you can always just play the cigarettes too or the or i yeah. guess it could be drago buster as well so uh, up next at level one, 2k counter, a uh, little bit of extra power. Your Emmas do sit at 6k or 65 mm-hmm. cross turns, so this this makes them a little bit more defensible. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's there if you if you're playing against a deck that you know struggles to be your Emmas, just to make sure that the, just to allow them to live a turn mm-hmm. and get some more value out of them. And you're on eight pants, so more than likely you can fish into. Uh, Fish into another pants and combo again with your Emmas, uh, should mm-hmm. they live. Uh, I believe our last level one card here, uh, the Cosme event. It's a 1-0 yellow counter event. Choose one of your music characters for the turn that character gains. When this card is placed from the stage to the waiting room, so when your card dies during your encore step or what have you, uh, you put it back where it was rested. And you also get to choose one trait on one of your opponent's characters and make your opponent's character lose that trait. 
I just noticed that that doesn't say for turn. I imagine it's for turn. <laughs> I would imagine that too, but it would be really funny if it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So so us so uh talking of this card as though it was just for turn, uh, just, it may seem a little bit weird that that second effect, but that is relevant against uh certain effects as we saw in this very deck that the Emma. Combo only works if, um, uh, yeah, if you're in, I think your entire field has to be music trait. So if you take music trait away yeah, from, uh, yep, yeah, if all your characters are music, so if you take that away, they can't do the combo. So for, for various, for little things like that, for that, that people don't usually think of, this can be a good way to, to, uh, get one over on your opponent. Like mm -hmm. other notable effects like in this meta uh Eris only gets a two K if all if all your opponent's characters are six at a world. So you, you can dig that trait from one of those characters and suddenly Eris has this power. Yeah the fact that you, so the fact that I, a lot of like uh like standby target ish cards just get uh get traded power off of or get power based on other traded characters like mm -hmm. uh like Elaine requires uh, six-sided trait, world trait characters in the back row, you can just snipe the trait off of those, and uh, this functions as an effective power backup for your lane as yeah. well. And and it also serves to save a character. Mm -hmm. So obviously that's not as good as saving your character and also killing your opponent's character. But say if you have another M, M uh, Climax in hand and you're saving M with this, you're able to do your Maguro effect again next turn. That's nice to be able to do. Seems pretty good, yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you play a different uh, event in your deck instead of this one? I don't believe so. I think I'm just on Cigarettes and Drago Buster. I just don't play this Okay. Card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I... I... In my list, I haven't, I have not had an issue uh, hitting the event and waiting room requirement for the Emma either. But I imagine it's even easier in this deck since you're on, yeah. like I'm on nine, eight total, eight or nine events, yeah, yeah, eight total. Uh, three of this, the one Dragon Buster, four of the okay. cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Do you run five total? I'm guessing. I run five total. I might be on two okay. Dragon Busters. I don't remember. Okay, so yeah, that I wanted to run more just to be safe because I really wanted to not have to worry about my Emma not working. But uh, if you've had good experience experience with with being able to get into this with fewer, then you can definitely I'd say you can definitely justify cutting this card altogether if you don't want the that angle shot effect or if you just want to run more characters. Yeah, de definitely not a bad card. Definitely a card I have uh, I've considered trying to fit into my deck. The uh, the trait snipe effect is uh, w when it works, it's extremely funny, and, uh, mm -hmm. your, and your opponent I feel like never sees this coming. Yeah, this is kind of a, a troll card, which is kind of appropriate for costume, I'll say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, something I would know about this list, I currently don't have any level twos in this because I'm running this. Okay. So if you want to run level two backups or an adachi or something uh or i don't know why i say adachi but if there's other cards you want to run this is a good flex spot i would say yeah for sure all right jumping right to level three uh we've got oh boy. four copies <laughs> of the card the conifer finisher uh on play top check x look it up to x cards x is the number of your music characters grab any card from among those cards and when you play the Climax, you may... Yeah, it goes off immediately. You may discard two cards from your hand and rest this. If you do, mill the bottom seven cards of your opponent's deck. And for each Climax you hit among those seven, you deal one instance of three damage. So if you hit four Climaxes, your opponent burns three, then burns three, then burns three, then burns three. Uh -huh. the, the downside, obviously, being if you pay the cost turn this card sideways it doesn't get to attack and then hit no climaxes uh you have blown a bunch of resources and uh and lost one of your attacks which has had you brian <laughs> not not great i've i've fired off two of these on my reasonably compressed opponent and hit 14 clean off the bottom so it, yes. it, it does happen but uh 
I have not done that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel like on a, on average you hit maybe maybe two climaxes off this effect. On average, you hit at least one. I would say. Yeah. Uh, so if you hit if you hit zero, that's obviously very 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 bad. If you hit one, you basically ditch two cards and make yourself a, a stock in order to do the normal normal amount of damage you would have done anyway. If you hit two, then you've done a pretty standard burn finisher. Mm -hmm. You've hit three. Now we're talking. Now yeah. you're doing really good damage, and and also going through your opponent's deck super fast, and you're probably gonna get some refresh points in there along with the burn. Threes. Yeah, I get some extra guaranteed damage as well. I have personally killed slime at two zero from this. Sorry, Brittany. I, I have watched. Uh, I have watched this happen. Uh, this can be extremely good, especially against decks like slime, which are snatch to compress super hard. Mm -hmm. However, I will say I like this card less than I thought it would. It is super high rolly. It is either the best thing in the world that your partner cannot possibly live through, or or it's average, or it's a or it basically ends the game for you, because. Like think think about it this way: you're uh, you're starting four cards plus your climax when you play this, and you're probably not gonna have much in your hand if at all after doing this twice. So it, it's the classic problem that that finishers have, which is once you finish and your opponent lives, then what? Yeah, Especially because you can't, you're not getting attacks off with this unless you're unless you have enough stock to burn and mm -hmm. the uh, marker on the Kanata to restand it. So you're just you're in a really rough spot if this if this doesn't work. Yeah. So the, so the, the variance has been a little bit of a turnoff for me, but also mm -hmm. also like you're saying, the fact that uh, when it comes back around to your turn, you have now uh, assuming your opponent doesn't die from this and then you live somehow. Uh, you have discarded your entire hand for this combo. This card has not attacked, so you've generated no stock. And assumedly, your opponent has uh, played things that are larger than 10k and killed this card mm -hmm. from your board. So you now have nothing. Yeah. I, I wish it from experience, uh, on average, in, term, in situations where after I do this, I usually have one stock mm -hmm. uh, and the card I drew for turn after I do this. So it's just, just, just because this, the stock is ends up being super lean. I find in the sec, maybe I'm just, I'm just having bad games, but I just find myself with effectively nothing, and except for maybe my brain armor, if I happen to get that. Yeah, it's you... it's just it feels really really bad when this misses and it's perfectly capable of missing even when you think it shouldn't be. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. The, the game plan with this deck, though, is stockpile resources, get to level 3, fire off 2 of these, 3 if you three if you can, and pray to God that you kill your opponent. You're, you're basically hoping to set, hoping the sack, if you, yeah. think, mm -hmm. if you think about it like that. Yeah, the it, it is nice that this cantrips, this, that kind of takes the sting out of this and makes it easier to get off, but still, you even with the cantrip, you still usually have nothing for this afterwards. Yeah, it's a, it's an extremely uh, feast or famine style card. You just you mm -hmm. either completely delete your opponent from existence, or you uh, or you're left with nothing. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel like this is in some instances kind of a, a sack card, just just because just just like when you're sacking, you can just win when you have no business winning, just because your opponent got super bad luck. Yeah. So if you know you are a sack. By all means, play this. You will go far with it. But <laughs> yeah, if you're the, the the other thing you have to worry about this with this card uh, specifically is you mm -hmm. have to keep you have to keep close track of your opponent's deck state. If your opponent yeah. if your opponent's decompressed, then you are you're better off trying to field an off finisher or even just vanilla swinging with this card because because of the risk you take when you pay all of these resources to potentially just mill seven clean off the bottom of your opponent's deck and lose an attack. Mm -hmm. so and that... even even with all that though i will say when this card works 
it's the best. Oh, absolutely. It, 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 tr it truly is. It's the, the like when, when you hit feast, it's it's just there, there's nothing else like it. Like yeah. this is actually one of the best finishers in the game when it works. Yeah. It's just a matter of when you're thinking about building this deck. It's just a matter of are you someone who's willing to risk this this biting your hand yeah when you play it yeah in, in the end it's, it's an ex uh it's an extremely toxic high roll card and if that sounds like it appeals to you this uh this might be your finisher uh, all right on to other level threes we run th uh, four copies of the early play heal shizuku uh, if there are two or fewer climaxes in your waiting room you can early play this card just heals from top of clock to waiting room and on play gets 3k power through the end of your opponent's next turn. So you early play it, it heals you one, and it sits at 11-5 for the first turn cycle that's on the board. Mm -hmm. Not not an irrelevant early play heal, but uh, usually usually the damage lines up such that uh, your Emma finishers get you through your first deck right around the time you're hitting level two. So the uh, the two or less uh waiting room condition usually isn't an issue in my experience so sometimes yeah, same. You, sometimes you cancel too much and get a little bit unlucky but uh, most of the time i feel like that works out yeah you can very reliably play this um i don't think there are any other yellow or blue relevant early plays there is the mf from set one that get, that has on reverse i look up to four take up to two characters mm -hmm. that helps you keep hand uh i prefer this overwhelmingly because it it, it heals. Uh, they both have the same RGB condition, two or less, I believe. They do, yes. And uh, so th this heals, uh, and it's... I think it's bigger on play. I think the Emma might... Maybe maybe it's bigger. The, but uh, I, the, I, the, the Emma is 500 for each other character on turn, so I think it gets to 12 on turn, uh, 10 during your Yes, opponents. 12 on turn. This mm -hmm. is bigger cross turn. Uh, the Emma gets you more hand, but in my experience, you usually have plenty of hand all through the game until you use the Kanata. Once you have the Kanata, you now have no hand, but up until then, it's usually fine. Yeah. So I don't think the Emma is strictly necessary, so I, I think we would just play... Go, go in, go all, all in on this. You run, I run forward, so I make sure I hit it every single game. It's a good... It's a good card. It comes down, heals, wall does a little bit of walling, make opponent work to hit over it. I, I think it's a good card to play. All right, and we have one copy of this level three uh, Kanata from set one. Uh, it's on play heal, and at the beginning of your attack step, if this card is standing in your front row and you have another music trait character, you can rest this. Uh, discard a music character from your hand and then burn one burn three to your opponent in any order so one then three or three then one of your choice yep this is your backup plan if you somehow in your eight pan stack completely whiff your finisher <laughs> climax uh that has never happened to me um if it does you can play this unlike the kanata it does heal so it's just another heal option. Maybe it's worth considering cutting one or two of the Shizuku's for any more of this. Especially if you want to be more explosive with the content finisher. So you would uh, play to the combo one and then one of this in your front row. Rest, rest them all. Uh, you should probably you have a better chance of getting... Two, two of the combos and one of this off, then you do three of the Kanatas. Yeah. So uh, it's worth considering that if you want to be extra explosive. Yeah, so uh, so something to mention, like like the Kanata finisher, I don't think I mentioned it when we were on the card itself, but uh, this card as well uh, completely dodges uh, backups and tap counters. Yeah. Worth noting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Th so. This is... Both, both Kanatas are completely uh, uninteractable... Uh, madness that yeah. yeah can't can't be uh can't be back up can't be moneyed can't be tapped you, you are you are tr when, when your opponent's facing this they are truly just letting jesus take the wheel <laughs> of, of their lives so mm -hmm. uh th this if your opponent it it's a good way to make your opponent i'm sure people will, are 
even if this deck like doesn't take off, we still hate playing into this, just because you can't do anything about it. You mm -hmm. just gotta hope and pray. Yeah, th this card is effectively, effectively like it's like an on attack, pay one, ditch one, burn one, and then yeah. and then an attack for three. But that that mm -hmm. also dodges backups and tap. So, yep, pretty good. And it heals. And it Always heals. Always nice. Mm -hmm. Worth noting that I don't believe any of the main climax finishers in EG set two have come into play. Come into play heal. At least none of the uh, ones I've played yet. The Ayamu does. The tricolor deck does. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Must be nice, Brian. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and our last level three here, the uh, uh -huh. Shizuku Drago Buster style event. Level three, cost four. Uh, your opponent reveals the top six cards of their deck, shuffles those cards back into their deck, and then puts the top X cards of their deck into their clock, where X is the number of climaxes you saw in those six that you revealed. Um, have you ever played this card, Brian, uh, in this deck? Maybe once, and I think maybe it hit one climax. So not super relevant in, in, yeah, in, in, I, in my I've experience. I've never played this card once in all my testing with it. Yeah, usually, usually uh, you're tapping out for your Kanata finishers and you don't have yeah. the stock for this. You don't have a lot of stock overhead in this deck. Nope, not, not really. Uh, may maybe if you just don't play the Shizuku's, you could hit into this since you'll save it with stock that way, but not super relevant, especially because the Kanata is probably just going to kill your opponent anyway if it does well. Mm -hmm. uh, so... This is mainly here just to be in events that helps your helps you meet the Emma condition. Uh, if if somehow, as, as I said before, if you somehow miss your your Kanata finisher in your eight pants deck, <laughs> uh, this is an all finisher option. Yeah. Uh, but it's not that great it's mostly just here for event fodder i would say i guess and in the edge case where you're having some really long game where you do get to build mm -hmm. a lot of stock uh you're able to hold this card up and make your finisher turn even more explosive yeah but i mean i i would not expect to play this as a main part of your finisher every single game definitely not. yeah this is this is a win more card very much yeah, so. ab absolutely <laughs> because in cases where this card is good where your opponent is uh has a deck filled with climaxes. The Kanata finisher is also good. Yeah, you can just play two Kanatas for the same stock, and as long as you have the cards in hand, you'll you will even more guarantee the win than this card would. Yeah, this card would. All right, and that is uh, that's it for this deck. Uh, overall game plan pretty typical level zero just try to sculpt into the uh, as many copies of the uh, the emma level one combo as you can uh go getting to level one throw down the emmas uh, maybe a pant support in the back row they said at 6k 65 uh fire the combo off grab uh grab copies of the cigarettes event or cards that you're looking for start setting up for your finisher grab a copy or two of the kanata uh, you get to level three field uh, usually two, if you're uh, if you're having an especially good game, three copies of the Kanata finisher, and blow your opponent out because if the Kanata finisher falls through, you are uh, a little bit out of luck. One nice thing about this deck that I don't think we've mentioned yet is it overall it overall has exceptional deck control. Yeah, mm -hmm. like between the Magro, the Cigarettes, the Brainstormer, the Chiri. You, you just have so many different ways you can manipulate your deck with and get it exactly where you want it to be, which is very nice, and I think that's very much a feather in this deck's cap. Yeah, especially with Rushia floating around. Being able to manipulate yeah. your deck such that you don't have a waiting room is uh, is pretty relevant. Mm -hmm. That's very nice in its own right. That Even with... I feel, I feel like we were a little bit harsh on the content in this video, but like even without the content, this still has such good deck control. I feel like this has a, a great place in the meta. Yeah, but... like honestly speaking, with with Russia. Yeah, it, especially. I mean, if if you're not a fan of the insane variants of the Kanata finisher, you can honestly replace it with almost any other finisher from the set, and the rest of the mm -hmm. shell would probably function just fine. 
Yeah. I know you were testing the uh, the clock kick for set one, and you're having some decent success with that. That's that's like maybe you could just replace the Devil Three game in this deck with with that, and you might have something that's more style if mm -hmm. the contest scares you off. Yeah, the the Karen clock clock kick finisher is definitely more consistent. The problem with that card is it only gets to like. 12k on its own mm -hmm. so scoring reverses in a meta where most of the things you play into are standby and or ruchia mm -hmm. it just doesn't work out some of the time yeah so, so that's that's been a little bit awkward too but uh mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure but... there is uh a more consistent choice that could work in mm -hmm. this slot uh, as well there's there's a lot of decent finishers in niji like even in this very deck the the off climax Kanata. Yeah. That, that's mm -hmm. a perfectly fine option in itself. I used to uh I used to lean into that pretty hard with age standby just because it's it's just such a nice effect to to have. With, with the same uninteractability that the other other Kanata has. So maybe if you don't like the extremely high variance of the combo Kanata, you might prefer the lower variance of the off combo Kanata. Mm -hmm. But if your opponent is having a good game and they're extremely compressed, there is mm -hmm. uh, there's no beating that Kanata finisher. It will nuke people from orbit. It it will very much turn a good game into a bad game for them. Yeah, like like instantly. This deck hates good players. But then when you're playing when you're playing against players who don't compress, you get to your finisher turn and you go, "Wow, my finisher doesn't work." <laughs> uh, is the finisher? Let me check. Is this mandatory? I don't think it is. The yeah, you may pay the cost. The, yeah, the, you can just combo, swing you, out yeah, with you, it. Yeah, you, you just vanilla swing with it in those cases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Which is it's something, I guess. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Th this deck, I will say, no matter how like good it actually is, is very fun to play. Mm -hmm. Just because that the concert finisher is just. It is the highest of highs when it hits. It yeah. truly is. And, and sitting down across from this, you will just be dreading the moment these cards come down in case all of your climaxes are at the bottom because it will just destroy you it will in just, that case. Yeah, yeah. It will end you right there. End you straight at level two. I've, Possibly earlier. I, I've, I don't I've, know. I've, I've seen <laughs> it happen multiple times. Not in my games, though. In Zach's <laughs> games. <laughs> All right, but that's that's about it. As usual, we've got our links at the end here, uh, the card games and competitive voice discords. If you're looking to uh, get in touch with other players, communicate. Uh, those are the best place to get in touch with other players. The global community and NA community Facebook groups should be your destination for buy, sell, and trade of Weiss Schwartz cards and product. And WeissFight.net is uh, an in-browser uh, Weiss Schwartz simulator that you can play with any other Weiss players from around the world. You can take the uh, take any deck or any um, any list from Encore decks. Uh, this list included will be in the description below. Stick it in there, and you are good to go. Uh, but with that said, that is it for this video. Uh, Zach, anything to say before we close here? Um, if you if you play this deck, make sure your opponent has protection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Kanata will uh, she'll let him have it. Indeed. And with that, Pittsburgh White Schwartz signing off. Uh, see you next time. <laughs>